Hey everybody, it is Dirk Weekdays. I'm Dirk, and it is Thursday, March 21st at 5 p.m. Usual time, Basher time. All the bastards in the world, don't forget to send your emails, your pictures of your beloved pets, your loves, your cars, your watches, all the stuff you want to share. You send it to me, I share it with the world, and we start a conversation around it, because it's about you, me, and everything in between. Let's see who's in the room right now. We've got the incredible Andrew Volkovich, as usual, with Canadian $2. And he says, please don't hesitate to upvote and subscribe. And that doesn't take a whole hell of a lot, does it? Just to do a little bit of that? Doesn't, right? So we'll give him a little bit of a... <laughs> Super chat. Thank you so much, Andrew, for that. Andrew says he's working till 5.30, but I'm sure the show will be entertaining on replay after I get home. Have a great show, and everyone be safe and be happy. And that's all we care about on the show is that everyone is safe and happy and living. I hate that expression, living my best life, you know, because it usually is like selfish twats that say that. Or just some obnoxious uh, television personality. I'm living my best life. Oh, Fuck. Angela Minichillo says, hi to Andrew. Take care out there. Andrew, come home as soon as you can, will you? The incomparable Nick Sisto is here. It says, good evening, all. Hey, Nick Sisto. Dean, hey, Dirk, sent you a message on Patreon today about boxing. Does Patreon send you notifications when messages are sent? They probably do. I probably don't have it set up, but I did uh, go. Th I was on Patreon earlier this morning because I've got to put some content on that for all you all, my beautiful Patreons who I have on the bottom of there, starting with Samlet Consulting, Andrew Wolkowicz, Go Moto Soto, Nick Sisto, Dean, Complicated Time, Fergal McDermott, Nathaniel Hannon, Dana O'Malley, and Lord Scotty H., and the aforementioned Dean McKenzie. Thank you so much. And those are the, the beautiful Patreons, so we love them. Okay, let's see what else we got in the Fernando Alvarez says, sorry for your loss, Dirk. Thank you so much, Fernando. Nice to see you in the chats. Uh, and I thank you so much. Uh, listen, guys, I, I made my cards out today. These are my beautiful cards with a picture of my beautiful Laverne inside. And um, these are going out tomorrow. I just finished writing the first batch of them so if you uh if you are part of the uh, bastards one of the bastards part of the bastard family please don't forget to uh leave me your email at basherdirk at gmail.com and i will send a card out for you because uh, i love you guys and thank you so much this has been a really hard week for me as you all know and um you know yeah so I'm not going to dwell on that anymore because it's a real Debbie Downer. But these are the cards that are going out today, going out tomorrow. Um, this I had some other pictures made up for her. Where are they? Um, but Paul and I had an argument about, let's get a color picture of her all lively and beautiful. And, you know, we made these cards for everybody. And I want to thank you for that because you're worth it, all of you. And I, I can't thank you enough. Jim Lassick says, hey, bastards, missed y'all. Hey, Jim Lassick, uh, did you send me your 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 address? A card is coming your way. If you did, anybody who sends me an email, uh, an address, I will send a card out to you, I promise. And I'll finish them up tonight and tomorrow morning, and then I'll go to the post office. And yeah, Ray Ray says, today was a good day. I'm glad to hear it, Ray Ray. Um, I know you had a rough week too. Very heavy duty, and I'm glad that today... It was a good day. And I got your address and a card is coming. You're a heavy driver. Greetings from London. 15 Celsius, no rain. 15 degrees being about 36 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, 56 degrees Fahrenheit, which is temperate. Uh, it is about the same here in New York. It was very, very sunny. I'll tell you one of the things that um, that's really kind of rough is that uh, Laverne loved finding the sunshine as it came in the house. So anytime the sun, a sun ray would come in, she'd go park herself in there. And then when it would move, she'd move. And then throughout the day, <laughs> she'd be in the living room on top of the couch, then on the, on the, on the TV stand, and then on a chair. And then she'd be out of that room because she knew that the sun went around the bed and she'd be down in the bedroom on the bed and move like five, six times as the, 
as the sun light went in there. So I kind of watched the rain, the, the, the sun rays today. And, um, I have her, uh, I haven't had a, a chance to you know, get an urn yet uh, or any of that stuff. I have her in the, they give you a, like a little, it's like a shopping bag. I hate to say it, but I found her favorite toy and I put it in there and I moved the uh, bag to uh, all the different places where the sun was shining and I just moved it throughout the day. I don't know why it made me feel better, but it did. Uh, heavy driver at 25 miles away from you. Hey, make a, make a change to be dry. You could do that. And Jim did respond to my email with a great. So that means I'll have a card going out to all the beloved bastards uh, that appear in the chat every single day. And I'm so grateful for it. I thought today, since uh, Omega officially announced it, why don't we take a peeky poo at uh, the Moon Swatch? And then we could talk about what you guys think about it. Right? Let's go. Here it is. Swatch unveils the Moon Swatch Snoopy Mission to Moon phase. Now, the first thing out of my mouth was like, man, I'm going to get that dirty. It's all white. And the more I look at it, the more I dig it. I didn't, I wasn't so crazy about it being all white. And I probably will change the strap because I'm definitely going to get one. I'm planning on going day one. That's so far. That is the plan. That's Tuesday. I think I'm going to camp out with a couple of uh, other luminaries, believe it or not, people whom I have not met in real life, which would be very interesting. But uh, we had a little chat amongst ourselves, and we might be doing that. Uh, I would love to get this. Um, so uh, there was like a little blurb with Rain Elishelman, the chairman of Omega, but it wasn't really related. I think it was Adrian Barker screwing around with us, making it look like he did. Uh, he was in an airport, so he made a quickie little uh, doodad, which is fine. So here it is, Swatch and Omega once again dropping another collaboration that is bound to be a hit, the Moon Swatch mission to Moon phase, inspired by the Omega Speedmaster Moon Watch Snoopy. Uh, the initial thoughts are that you know the other ones were a massive hit, and uh, the the total sold to date's in the low millions. I heard it's four point five million. Now at two hundred and fifty to three hundred uh, pop, that's pretty good revenue for the old Swatch Group. Um, and I don't know who just recently. I think it might have been um, Brittany. You know, the watch gringa, I think she recently did a list of like financially which watch companies are the in the best shape. And believe it or not, Swatch was like number 19 last year. Now they've moved up to 13, which I find to be hard to be believe because they've got such an incredible uh, arsenal, stable of brands uh, or paddock of brands, I should say. Ha ha. And, uh, they have swatch which you could buy a swatch for 89 bucks some of them um there was actually one swatch that i really wanted to get a guy came into the restaurant when i was working there and i said like, oh that's great i'm gonna go get it and it was 175 bucks and i was like you know i don't love it that much i'll put that money towards when the next moon swatch comes out which here it is and um i'll play a little snip of uh, adrian barker who talks about how he loves the fact that it's all white 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 and he doesn't care about the moon phase compl complication, which I think is the, look at that. That is freaking stunning, man. I absolutely love that. What do you guys think about that? I think that's really, really, really cool. Uh, the super luminova in green. And I guess that's, it's blue. So I guess it's, you know, a, some variation. Cause I know that chromolite is blue. But, you know, chromolite is just a trademark name on a, on a chemical. So obviously they, they use the similar chemical. But it looks really super bright. It's got a star field. It says, I can't sleep without a nightlight, which is really cute. I remember that from one of the Peanuts movies. And uh, the regular green Super Luminova. I think it looks fantastic in the dark. I'll probably put it on another strap. But, you know, that's just how it goes. Um Dean says the Omega Moon Snoopy does look nice. I don't any I don't own any of them, but this one does look like the best one. Hey, it's a great place to start if you're going to go uh, and get one. I just have a mission to Mercury, so I I I only have one. Also, um, which other ones did I like? I loved Uranus, but I'll bump uh, or Uranus, um, depending on which side of the pond you're on. Um, and that would be the one that I would want next. I love Jupiter and Saturn. Uh, Mars looks like the Alaska project, which is cool. 
Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't just, the only one I disliked, and I, I can't even say that I disliked it. I think that the one that wowed me the least was Venus because one, it looks like a lady's watch and two, it's 42 millimeters. So wouldn't it have been smart to make that in 36 or 38, you know, just so it fits more beautifully on the lady's wrist, the kinder, gentler uh, gender. I think it would have been great. Something really pretty. I think they made a mistake because, you know, how many guys are wearing, I don't know any guy that, that's wearing Venus at all. I don't know anybody. Uh, Night Watchman, are you becoming a proper watch geek like my? I think I, I am I becoming one? <laughs> I think I've been one. I don't know. I don't know. Is it, does it get worse? The only thing I don't do is I don't go out and buy a lot of watches. I admire them. And as you know, I'm like a speed master uh, encyclopedia. Uh, it's kind of just what I read about all day long and research. I just love the history of that particular brand and model. I just love it, even though I'm a Milgausian now, and I have been since the end end of last year. Uh, I just find uh, I just find it to be great. And Emmett O'Malley was here in town, and he's got the beautiful Submariner, and uh, we swapped for a second. And he's like, you know, I didn't like this watch until I see it in person. And he's like, wow. And that's, I think, the, the wow factor of the Milgauss is that when you see it in person, I was just talking to Sheen on the phone, and you you see it in a totally different, you know, because, the, you know, the white gold indices just sparkle, and then the green crystal just shimmers, and the way the light plays on it, it's just, the green kind of reflects all over the oyster bracelet and the smooth bezel, which is really a spectacular thing. So anyway. Yeah, yeah, so I don't know if I'm becoming one. Um, if anything, I've just become more of a fan of other brands. Um, you know, there's a couple of brands out there that I never really thought about before. I mean, not thought about, but thought I would want, which I kind of kind of do. Uh, Fernando says, lucky you, my closest swatch store is in Miami, so I'll have to wait. It's a four-hour drive. Well, technically, I can get to the watch store, the swatch store, from my door to the swatch door, I could probably get there in less than 10 minutes um, because I just have to get on a seven train, take it uh, two stops, one, two, three stops, and then walk three blocks. So it's pretty quick for me. Dean says there will probably be mayhem for this newbie version. Like the first time, they, I agree. I, I think that the, the Moonshine Gold one oh, it could have been done a lot better. Couldn't they have handled that just a, a little bit better? I just, I liked the idea of it. And then I thought, meh, whatever. The, the Bruce Salom says cheap trash. You know, it, it it's a, it's a swatch. It's just a commemorative swatch. It's cool. It's not a, you know, it's not horology. It's quartz. It's whatever. But these are collectibles. I think the people that went out there and bought the entire collection with the box, because <laughs> you can get that box. I think that'll be like the Cabbage Patch Kids or um, what were those other uh, things? It, it's just a collectible. Eventually, if somebody has the whole set, to this day, I am so mad at myself for not getting that set of the uh, the release of the 1957 Omega Speedmaster, Railmaster, and Seamaster, because it came in the most beautiful box you've ever seen. And they each came with on a bracelet with a leather strap, with a NATO, with uh, um, with uh, tools and uh, cloth, three cleaning cloths, and uh, uh, and so many other things. It was incredible. Um, so yeah, Al Benedetti says I didn't want to like it, but I got to say it's super cool. Add a black or blue strap. I'm with you, Al Benedetti. Envious, you have a swatch boutique near you. I live five seconds from the heart of New York city, you know, uh, Richard, I'm not going to say your, your second name. Cause that's like a terrible word. I hate that word. Hope that's not your real name. I'm sure it isn't. Snoopy gets all the kudos. Let's rehabilitate, really re rehabilitate big Ben. <laughs> I always felt so bad for pig Ben because, you know, he walks around with that rain cloud all over him. Let's rehabilitate Lucy. Cause she's a bitch. 
uh Hitesh C says upvote guys yeah listen um I I like um like uh the big guy uh Asheen I don't uh go out there and I do actually I shouldn't say that I do I did ask everybody to get me to 2000 and you did but here we go you know we're above 2000 now and it looks like it's going up and up and up and up and up you upvoted Dave F 451 upvoted to number 21 thank you so much man that's great. 21 likes, 660, 70 in the room. That's terrific. That Omega box was fantastic. You know what I'll do? I'll pull it up so we can all look at it and just ogle it. So let me go back and we'll finish up on this watch. So you get that and then you get the... It would have been cool if they put Snoopy on the crown. I think they could have done a couple extra things. But he's cute. He's just there right in the sub dial with the moon phase. And on the back, it's got a real peanut style cratery moon. I really, really want this watch, and I really plan on getting it on Tuesday. Uh, but, you know, it's 42 millimeters, 13.75 in height. It's bioceramic, which means plastic. Uh, crystal unavailable, plastic. Water resistance, zero. Uh, quartz movement, hours, minutes, seconds, and a chronograph. And a moon phase. Hello. Uh, match bracelet with Velcro clasp. Uh, limited edition, no, but each customer is limited to one watch per day starting March 26th at Swatch Boutiques. Price, U.S., $310. That is quite a pricey price for a moon swatch. I mean, $310? I don't know. That's kind of pricey. Uh, Selena says she's running around. We'll also catch the replay later tonight. Please upvote and appreciate the show. Yeah, thank you, Selena. You're one of the most beautiful people. Selena, I do I, I do have your address already. I just realized that I was going through all the addresses because I sent you banana bread and you, I will go find that address and I will send you a card immediately. Um, Angelo Minichello, five Canadian dollars. Dirk. So I pulled the trigger and ordered the Radcliffe Arlequin today. Now I wait. Let's give that, let's give that this. fantastic very excited for you is there anything more exciting than waiting wait the waiting is the best part it's like uh if you love a girl or you love a guy and you want to kiss them and you just haven't and you just can't wait the waiting is the best part there's an old expression that says the chase is better than the catch now that's not necessarily true but that anticipation that butterflies that uh that feeling you get in your body with your your chemicals and your endorphins when they're flying you just can't wait it's when you were a little kid i remember i'm not even as i'm a baseball fan i'm not an athlete of any kind other than uh mountain biking and yoga if yoga is athletic in any way it is but it's not you know what i'm saying i remember I'm, i ordered a basketball with coupons and I remember I couldn't wait for this freaking basketball. I couldn't wait. And finally, my sister Pat picked me up from school because she's older. She drove and she brought the basketball. And I was like, it was, I was like Snoopy doing the Snoopy dance. I was so excited about it. And it's like, I, I think I used it for like five minutes and didn't care anymore because I don't give a shit about basketball at all. At all. Couldn't care less. Baseball, I'm a very big fan of. Chili Badger. Up the Dirk. Thank you for up in Chili with your saucy badger. That's a very cute logo, by the way. Melly C says, did I get your email? I sure did. And you're going to be the first one featured in today's pictorial roundup. Dean with the 499 super sticker. <laughs> Thank you so much for that, Dean and Al De Benedetti. Al, I always want to see De Benedetti because it's a that was a um, a Tony's real last name, right? Benedetti, uh, uh, Tony Bennett's real name. Uh, Snoopy Fund. Good luck, Dirk. Four dollars ninety nine cents. Let's do this. Since it's for the Snoopy Fund, let's give it a big boom. Yeah, that's the plan Tuesday, and I will film uh, most of it. I'll do some live Gonzo streaming. Why the hell not? I'll also take a lot of pictures and um, and all the company that I'm going to have, which I th will be a surprise until it's announced because I'm not exactly sure who's coming yet. But it's the plan is in the works. The lovely and car talented Carolyn Merton, the girl with the wrench. Guys, I joined a bit late today, but saw the Snoopy Moon Swatch. I will be in line to buy come Tuesday. Wow, you're giving it away, Carolyn. 
Anyway, that's the plan for me to join up with Carolyn Martin to go get our moon swatches. And I'm very excited about that. It's going to be the most fun thing I've done in quite a long time, you know? Um, so let's, let's check out what Adrian Barker had to say about that. Uh, you know, it's funny what he says about the white thing. Cause the white thing is the one thing about it that I don't love. Uh, but you know, that's just me. It's just too white. You know what? There's so much that I dislike that I frankly hate about these things. They're disposable. It's just a pure money grab on something that has genuine heritage. But when it looks as good as this, it's hard not to love it. This is the latest edition of the Moon Swatch collaboration between Omega and Swatch. This is a mission to Moon Phase. Frankly, I don't care about the Moon Phase complication. There's little Snoopy spinning around at the three o'clock. That's the best dark. part. Come on. Don't care about that. This is a pure white. Why don't you care about that? With black hands, black. He likes it because it's white. This is absolutely stunning. I want to hate it, but I don't. I love it. Do you think um, Adrian just uses that like the brush number one that's the perfect angle? Yeah, my beard gets all scraggly and stupid. Yeah. Sorry about that. Do you think he uses that George Michael thing where it's always the perfect amount of scruff on his face? Handsome bastard always looks great. <laughs> but it's funny. It's funny how he says that the uh, the he doesn't care about the moon phase. And I think that's the best part because especially when you see it all lit up in super luminova or or whatever version of illumination that they're using there, uh, I think it just looks amazing. The white part, I mean, it has a bit of a chemin de fer. I, I like the look of it, but I think it's going to look sick on a black or a, or a navy strap or even aquamarine. I mean, anything goes with white. Is there any color that doesn't go with white? Everything goes with white. I don't see why that's a problem. I think it'd be pretty, pretty, pretty cool. Selena says, I really like the Snoopy watch, but also not crazy for all the white, maybe on another strap. Yeah, I think that's probably what we're what we'll all do once we get it. Um, we can only get one. I'm not a flipper of any kind. So I only want one and I'm gonna wear it. So I'll probably wear that next, uh, you know, what is it? Uh, so that's Tuesday. So I do a show on Tuesday. So hopefully I'll have it for Tuesday's show. Uh, I don't see why we can't just hang out there all night. Uh, oh, the big guy's watching the show. He says, hate to be a dick, but your chances of getting a moon phase on Tuesday slim to none, unless you're in line for Monday around noon. Even then it might be tough. Well, if that's the case, Mr. O'Malley, then I will be shit out of luck because I, I've i never waited in line for anything. I'm just not the guy that queues up for stuff. I'm just, because I couldn't give a fuck. But, you know, this looks like fun. I was thinking about getting there for like nine o'clock at night or, you know, and just spending the night and having some drinks with the gang, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I guess we'll have to play it by ear, but it is Snoopy. And I bet you a lot of people will be getting in line for their kids or all the nerdy guys that live in their mom's basement and have never seen or had the love of a real woman will be online. <laughs> you know, guys that play uh, Dungeons and Dragons and whatever is the new nerd game du jour. You know, just like the 40 year old virgin, you know, guys who have like, you know, action figures on them. They, those are the be the guys. They're probably online right now. I guess that would be really stupid, but you're right. It, it's probably, you're probably, it's probably a hard dose of reality. Dean says mission impossible. Yeah. So they should just call it mission to impossible. Um, I guess we'll see. I wonder how many units they're going to have to sell. Uh, <laughs> he's raining on our parade. Don't rain on my parade. I don't how does even that's that's how gay I'm not because I don't know how that song goes. Uh, don't rain on my parade. You know, I can't pick the melody out to save my life out of my head right now, and usually I can. Uh, what the hell is that? Uh, Tuesday at 1 p.m., they'll be on eBay for $900. Uh, well, maybe I'll do that. <laughs> maybe I'll get online at uh, on Sunday night and uh, and buy one and sell it for 
900 and 899 mines cheaper. <laughs> I hate that kind of crap, but isn't it? Those are, there, there are people out there that that's their whole gig. I used to work for a scalper named Lior. And me and my friends used to go with like four different sets of clothes and like hats. And we would get online at Madison Square Garden for whatever big show was coming to town. We get online, you know, three o'clock in the morning. We'd be there all night. We'd buy our tickets. We'd go around, get on the back of the line, change our clothes around, go back and all this stuff. And that's what we did. And I got mugged maybe twice, maybe twice. And uh, they like they figured out where, there were people there that were preying on the kids that were working for this older guy. This guy was in his forties, and uh, but we used to get tickets for everything, and we never got a cut. We got paid, but we got paid shitty money, or we got paid in tickets, um, depending on the show, which is fine. Um, but there are people out there that just do that for a living, right? That's all that they do. They uh, did like I've talked about this about a million times. Uh, I think that the stub hubs and the ticket masters of the world should all be put out of business. I think there should be legislation against them. I don't think it's fair if I'm, you know, Joe Rockstar. Say, uh, I'm Joe Rockstar. I just put out a big hit record. Joe Rockstar's uh, uh, Granite Quarry. It's the biggest fucking rock album ever. Everybody wants it. It's bigger than the Eras Tour. I put it on sale. My highest ticket price is 800 uh for a golden circle uh masturbatory uh you know pole dance private room champagne room show uh and then somebody buys those tickets and sells them for twenty five hundred dollars so people are making a profit off of my work i disagree with the whole thing i know that and if you own it you can if you own an object you could sell it for whatever you want but that's not an object it's something different and i think it sucks and i think that that should not be allowed but that's just me because I just I don't go to concerts anymore because uh, it's just too expensive. I just don't I don't I, I the whole idea of going to see somebody show and knowing that that the artist getting ripped off, the fans are getting ripped off, and some fat dickhead sitting in his room and his with his bots and he's buying all these tickets and then putting up putting them up for resale. And the other problem is that if you go to and I and I showed this to to Dana. She went to buy tickets, and I, and she goes, "They're expensive." I said, "They're verified resales." She goes, "No, they're not. They're from the buck." I said, "Go look. Go look at the tickets. Verified resale. So not only can you buy them, you can immediately transfer them to verified resale and name your price on the same site. So the site that sells them is also the site that also pimps out the the scalp tickets. That is complete and utter bullshit." Uh, guys are saying Al Benedetti says seriously they are already on eBay for a pre-order of thirty two hundred. Who would want that for thirty two hundred dollars? I mean, that's a really sick Gibson Les Paul. I could go on on Reverb right now and go find uh, a Les Paul for thirty two hundred dollars, uh, or or amazing uh, Omega. You could probably even find like some weird ass Rolex that nobody wants on 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 eBay for thirty two hundred dollars. That's a lot of money. Mark Sherrard's in the room. Where 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 were you? You're late. Okay. God damn it! I told you a thousand times. Next time you sit in the back of the class. Yeah, the seller dwellers uh, just just bullshit fuckers. You know, Dean says you should leave uh, tonight and camp out, do it for the community. I would, I just have so much crap. I have a show to do tomorrow with the big guy. We do bashers classic Fridays and that's too far away. What am I going to sit in times square? Do you know what, do you guys, I'm going to tell you about times square. It's the shithole of all shitholes. It's a, it's a toilet with neon surrounding it. Um, when Giuliani was here and as crazy as he is now, when he was here and when Mayor Bloomberg was here, it was actually, they cleaned it up to the degree where it was pretty great. It's kind of like going into Disneyland, the M&M store and all that stuff, you know, uh, peanuts and, and, and all kinds of cool, uh, you know, family fair. Now it is, I have walked over what I assume are dead bodies. I've walked over endless hypodermic needles, bags, empty bags of the gly the, the glycerin bags filled with drug powder, uh, girls with their breasts out offering sexual favors. It has gotten so sci-fi weird. It's like Blade Runner with hookers and drug addicts. That's what it looks like now. 
And I've been there a couple of times because I've had to meet a, a certain friend uh, who happens to get put up there for work. And you know who you are. And I have had to go through there for the first time in eons. The last time I went through Times Square was during the pandemic. I went to go uh, meet. Uh, I was actually going to go to the premiere of Top Gun Maverick with Nathaniel. And it was going to be the first time I ever met him. But we both got COVID. And I had COVID. And Dana O'Malley had COVID. And I, she was in town. She was like stuck in a room i had to go through times square and i literally walked over a guy who had no clothes on and he had a needle hanging out of his head and he was on the sidewalk i called 911 because i was pretty sure he was dead and then he moved later on but i waited for the ems to show up because it was so bad and they were coming up to me i said stay away from me i have covid and at that time you thought like i'm gonna breathe on you and we're all gonna die so no one no one in new york city goes anywhere near times square we just don't do it it's there for i don't know who tourists people who want to like if i want to go to a broadway show which i've gone to you know many uh i kind of go the other way around i'll go on eighth avenue or i'll cut through from from you know avenue of the america sixth avenue i'll just cut through times square because it's generally most of the theaters are between times square and uh eighth avenue so i generally tend to kind of cut through I, I i don't walk through it and and if i don't have to i would never ever go near it uh, cause it's just gross. And then there's all kinds of people trying to sell you stuff. And, you know, there's like the, I love New York things and places that sell you fake Rolexes and yeah, 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 yeah. It's no goody, no goody, goody, goody. Carolyn Martin, the girl with the wrench says, Dirk, I promised you if we camped out, I would not be bearing my breast offering sexual favors. <laughs> well, really? What if we need cash? What do we do? Can I just like, you know, step right up, fellas? <laughs> I mean, my God, that shit goes on. I mean, this girl walked up to me and she was like this crazy black woman. She did. She probably was gorgeous at one time, but she had no no meat on her body at all. And she had no top on. She walked up to me. He's like, actually, I need to get rid of this so you can see it. She's doing this. You want that? You want that? You want that? And she was high. Like, you want that? You want that? You know, 20, 20 dollars, 20 dollars. And I was trying to run away from her. Like, what the fuck? And she kept following me too. And it was late. I was just coming home from drinks with Dana at her hotel. And um, I couldn't get an Uber. It just kept saying, you ever get in that situation where you're waiting for an Uber and it just, it's searching for a driver, searching for a driver, searching for a driver. And I was like, I'm just going to have to take the freaking subway. I wound up taking the subway home and it was nuts. Nuts, nuts, nuts. Everybody's favorite right-wing pundit is here on the show tonight with his first statement. His opening salvo is Democrat Marxist supermajority rule in New York City. So progressive. Good thing they're paying $30 million per week for hotels. Illegals going after Trump got rid of Thomas Jefferson. Yes. Uh, all I, oh, my take on that is um, that that at least they're using the Roosevelt Hotel for something and they haven't knocked it down because the Roosevelt Hotel is one of the most storied, legendary, big, grand dame hotels of Midtown. And it's one of these, I mean, you walk in there, it's Astoria, uh, the Waldorf Astoria, beautiful. Giant uh, esplanades and stairwells, balconies and bars. And it, it, it's amazing. And it closed right before the uh, immigration situation uh, and, uh, it's being used now. I don't know if they're going to trash it. I don't know what's going to happen there. I mean, I'm not going to speculate on what, the, but it, you know what? It probably would have been gone because now the original Statler Hilton lately known as the Pennsylvania hotel, which was directly across from Madison square garden, which was right across the street from the original Penn station, which was the most beautiful building ever built in New York city. That was knocked down in 1963 started. Uh, they started knocking it down in 61 and it was uh, McKim Mead and white neo classical masterpiece that they knocked down to put up the world's worst arena, Madison Square Garden. We are not proud of Madison Square Garden here in New York City. It's a famous place, lots of shows. It's a shitty venue. They redid it. They just put scotch tape on it. It sounds terrible. It looks terrible. And what it replaced is disgraceful. 
So uh, the hill, the accompanying hotel was built by McKim, Mead, and White as well. The most important architects in modern American uh, uh, architectural uh, circles. Um, that was just knocked down because Kathy Hochul, who is our illustrious ha uh, governor that we were handed after Andrew Cuomo got railroaded for, a pro a pro a pro a he touched a woman's shoulder and he got canceled. Uh, he didn't do anything else. Um uh, she basically is just trying to sell New York to the highest bidder and any foreign uh, entity who comes into New York City, you'll love this Tobster, any foreign entity who comes in here with enough money, she will sell, 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 sell. She'll, they'll change landmark statuses. They'll do whatever they can just to make another buck to line their pockets because it's not going into our city. It's um, good luck voting them out. We have before we could again, so we have before we could again. The problem is that there hasn't been any kind of amazing politician with any kind of personality, exuberance, um, path, anybody to ignite the fires under New Yorkers. And New Yorker is, you know, New York is, um, is not the city it once was why it's one of the reasons why I'm so disenchanted with it because I don't feel anybody has any New York pride. I certainly don't anymore. It's my hometown. It's where I grew up. Uh, it's where I went to school. It is where I learned everything I've ever learned in the world. And it's just been sold to the highest bidder. And that's just how I feel. Dean Dean Dance Machine says, Al Benedetti. Wow. Those are the black versions sprayed to the white dog. Kind of looks that way, right? And Mark says, I might have to get the Snoopy moon swatch because my daughter would lose her mind over it. I can't go to sleep without my night. Isn't that cute? So, hey, I think, Mark Sherrod, I think one of the reasons why it's going to be so popular is for that reason. I think so. Yeah. Um, Bob Sacramento, you are a smart mother. The Roosevelt Hotel is owned by Pakistan Airlines, and it has been for a very, very long time. And they had great plans for it. Uh, and you know, COVID happened. There were some plans because it is a magnificent hotel. I'll never forget many, many years ago, a friend of mine was in town and they said, I'm staying at the Roosevelt. And I was like, oh my God, I've never been uh, in a room. I've never seen a room there. I was so excited. And you know, it was in pretty good shape. It didn't, from, from where I was, it looked pretty good. Very elegant lobby, went upstairs, went to uh, his hotel room opened up the door. He had a dining room, a living room with a fireplace and a giant bedroom. And it was, it was absolutely enormous. And why did my thing just, did you guys see that? That scared me. It blacked out for a minute. Um, I'm getting this little like Wi-Fi notice. It says my connection is poor. Meanwhile, I'm not connected to Wi-Fi. I am hardwired to self-destruct. Um, yeah. Hands, knees, and toss says, Hey, Dirk, good to see that you're up. You know, I'm I'm up and down, my friend. Up and down, you know, up and down. Topes just says, Last time I was in New York City was 2017. It was great. Sucks what the liberals have done. It's not just the liberals, it's everyone. They're all, they all suck. It's all of them. It's all of them. But I will say this, you know, the lamest mayor in the entire world. I mean, this guy. That my camera? What's going on? That was the second time it did that. Hope it's not my phone. Can you just, can I just give me one second? I'm just going to check something real quick. Okay. Yeah. I don't know what that is. My friends, my camera, that's good. You can see my desk with all my shit on it. Um, I don't know what that is. I noticed that my camera keeps going like, like blacking out. I am like about, a week away, maybe a couple of days away from figuring out what to do with my computer situation. Cause my computer is a 2015 iMac at the top of the line, but it it's made records. It's done everything I've ever asked it to do, but it's probably needs, needs a blood transfusion of its own. I can't give it any more than I've already given it. And it's like, I'm going to have to start looking into like one of those Mac studios because this thing is just, it's, it's acting up and I know how to fix Macs. And Ashin knows how to fix Max. And, you know, we've, you know, we, we upgrade everything to the point where it's can't be upgraded anymore, you know? So uh, I just noticed that, I don't know if you saw it, but my camera went out and it started spinning. Could be that. 
Dirk calling Orson. <laughs> uh, you have to turn off the Wi-Fi on your Mac so it defaults back to the line. Dude, my Wi-Fi is my I don't have any Wi-Fi activated in my house. I right before the show, I unplug my stream box, I turn off my TV. I uh, turn off, I turn the MacBook off, I turn my iPad off, and I turn the Wi Fi on my phone off. Oh, wait a second. Wait a minute. Is that off? All right, hold on. One minute, please. I think my Wi Fi on my phone is, is on. Hold on. Give me a second. Wi Fi off. That could have been it. Let me get this back. Uh, hello. Sorry about that. Technical difficulties happen, don't they? Um, I think I had the Wi-Fi on my phone on. It'll focus. Focus. There you go. There it goes. What are you doing? I hate technical difficulties. It's weird. Jim Lassick with $4.99. Look at him looking old butch with his motorcycle looking amazing. $4.99. Boom. Thank you, Jim Jim. Heading to Cabo. Anyone have a cool trip idea or two? I am dive I'm a diver and a deep sea fishing guy. We gotta fix this. Come on. Um there it goes. Took a minute. Uh, I'm one of those guys that I couldn't find my glasses. So I went into the box where I have all my new glasses. I buy like the $13.99, six pairs of Amazon readers. Because I don't wear glasses in real life. I just wear them on the show because I have to look at screens and stuff, etc. So I just couldn't find them. So I just grabbed a brand new pair. Um, yes, you should go to Greece, Jim Lassick. Go to Greece, go to the islands. I would say go to like Hydra or one of the smaller islands. Stay away from Santorini. I'm sure you've already done that because you're a worldly son of a bitch. Uh, and if you want to see the most amazing or Croatia, go to Vela Luka, uh, which is an island off the coast, off the Dalmatian coast. I You won't believe some of the beautiful stuff there. You can you can literally see the floor of the water. It's incredible, the, the, the sea floor. It is amazing. Um, Steve McDonald had some great news today. Had all had the all clear. My throat cancer has gone. Getting a new sin to celebrate. Okay, you know what that that gets, my friend. That gets you something way way bigger than that. We're gonna give you the. Because you deserve it, my friend. Steve McDonald, the all clear on the throat cancer. Now, did you have the same throat cancer as uh, as Bruce Dickinson from Iron Maiden? You guys know that story? It's an interesting story. Uh, Bruce Dickinson from Iron Maiden, lead singer extraordinary, one of the best metal singers that's ever been down the pike. Top, top three, top four. Uh one of my favorite guys of all time. I'm more a performance fan than I am. I'm not, a, I mean, I love the way he sings, but I'm more of a fan of him as the guy and the way he looks on stage and all that stuff. Great front man. He, um, he got HPV related cancer and he was just finishing a studio record when he did, when they detected that he had cancer and, uh, they did all the chemo and radio ra radiation and he beat it. He's also a pilot, a 747 pilot, a Olympic fencer, a novelist, a radio show host, and lead singer of one of the biggest rock bands in the entire universe. And he came back and he sang better than ever. I mean, ever. Bruce Dickinson is an amazing singer. It's like a four octave range. Uh, but the road had taken a serious toll on his voice over the years. And he kind of was like straining a lot. Um, he came back with everything that, that he ever had in the beginning, plus more, which is outrageous. So congratulations, Steve. We're very excited for you. God bless. Scotty H. PayPal for either the watch or the Italy fund, your choice, or the, the legal fund, right? Let's do a big gong for you. That is, of course, Lord H to everyone else in the room. Lord Scotty H. Thanks so much for that. Uh, Bob Sacramento says, congratulations, Steve. Steve, we're so happy to hear that because that's just crap. Han says, went to the opticians to get a new prescription. Own frames personal. Aren't you fancy? Um, Ray Ray wants to know who my favorite comedian is. 
after Billy, after who? Billy Connolly uh, or Crystal? I don't, actually don't like Billy Crystal. I think he's kind of schmaltzy. That borscht belt comedy doesn't really do it for me. Uh, you know, it's like a pickle for a nickel. It's like, I'm not, not a big fan of that. Jackie, uh, what's his name? Jackie, uh, the guy that got blackballed in Hollywood, Jackie Mason. Um, my favorite comedian of all time. Uh, Steve Martin's one of them. The Jerk's one of my favorite movies ever. Just uh, enough of this old wine. We want the fresh wine. Uh, uh, Steve Martin, uh, Robin Williams. Um, uh, the subversive guys. I, I tried to get into Lenny Bruce. It didn't do it for me. Didn't do it for me. Uh, a little too, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I like a lot of comedians. Uh, I think Dave Chappelle's a fucking genius. Uh, I generally love everything. Even when he does politics, I love it because he's just so smart. He does it just to offend Ricky Gervais, you know, Ricky Gervais. Modern day comedian, I'll go 100% Ricky Gervais. Sometimes he makes you cringe, but oh, uh, <laughs> my fa uh, if I could find it, <laughs> I'll see if I could find the funniest thing I ever saw in my life. Uh, it was, um, what show was it? It was Afterlife, and it was the schoolyard scene. <laughs> if Fasheen's still on here, he knows what I'm talking about. Uh, uh, it was about his nephew. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this is it. Hold on. I'm going to show you the funniest thing I ever saw in my entire life. Why not? Oh, if Ricky Gervais gets mad at me, that's his problem. Ready? Hi, George. Hi. That's his nephew. Who's that? He's my uncle. Pedo! What? Pedo! I'm not a pedo. And if I was, you'd be safe to tell me that we're ginger cunt. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just so wrong uh, in so many ways. <laughs> it's so wrong. Um, yeah, that's funny. I love Steve Martin. I love Ricky Gervais. I love I love so many different people. Uh, delighted for you, Steve. Thanks so much. Uh, yeah, Han says in the seven forty seven pilot, he Ed Force One. You know, he first he had he first he was a seven thirty seven, then a seven fifty seven, then a seven sixty seven, and then when Iron Maiden were doing this big big tour around the world, he's like, all right, I've got this idea. We're gonna get a passenger seven forty seven. We're gonna convert it into a combi, and we're gonna load our entire stage show, which is not uh, to be uh, trifled with. Iron Maiden goes out there with a pretty big production, uh, which is nuts. Le Carré, welcome to the chat. Uh, did Catherine Zeta-Jones cheat Michael Douglas with you, Steve McDonald? That's funny. She was one of the most beautiful women in the world. She probably still is. Intolerable Cruelty, one of my favorite movies. Underappreciated movie with George Clooney and Catherine Zeta-Jones. Uh, another gorgeous uh, Welsh woman amazing absolutely amazing bob says uh seinfeld i'm a big seinfeld fan um a lot of people across the pond didn't get that show i don't know if it's american humor but it's a show about nothing but it's really funny uh julia louis dreyfus and michael richards he's jerry's the least funny guy in the show you know he's the one that does that well ah! Uh, but the rest of them are all pretty great. And it was, uh, there's so many episodes of that show that I find really incredible. Uh, Lord H likes Bill Burr. Uh, uh, I, I, yeah, I like Bill, Bill Burr's take them or leave them. Uh, Boston guys ge ten generally tend to make me mad. I don't know what it is about them. They have like a stick up their arse. Shane McGee with the five pounds, 99. That's no me holding a kyo. Why, why not Dino? Who's Dino? Do I know who Dino is? Is that a comedian? I don't know anything about it. Al Benedetti says, Afterlife, great show. Just watch them all again. Still left his heart. I mean, of course, Extras is his, is, I mean, there's The Office, which is, The Office is one of those shows that's really hard to watch because it's so cringy because oh god he makes you so, so, so uncomfortable. Uh, Steve Carell did a, 
less, you know, like a different job. I mean, Steve Carell is wonderful and that show was great, but it was a totally different animal because, you know, you just wanted to crawl into a hole with Ricky Gervais. For me, Extras is the greatest show. It's one of the funniest shows I've ever seen in my life and one of, and certainly his best. Second, I would say, is Afterlife because I did not like the show where he went uh, full retard, which you're not allowed to do, as in Tropic Thunder, never go full retard. And um, that was a terrible thing, whatever that was called. What was that called? Simon or it was a guy's name and he was, you know, he was mentally challenged and uh, it was just, I, th I think it was supposed to make you laugh and cry at the same time. And I just went, oh, God, sometimes he doesn't get it. Uh, Dean is smacking on Shane McGee saying, you are 007. Dirk had no idea. Uh, should I look at a picture of him? Does he look like it? Does he look? Like it? I, I, I got to tell you, I fully looked at Aaron Taylor Johnston yesterday or Johnson, and I totally don't want him to be James Bond. For first of all, he's got this really high voice, it's really kind of knackery, and he sounds like, you know, he's an East Enders, but he's got almost like, he's almost like a bloke with a gender identity problem. It's really kind of high, you know, maybe he's going down, you know, um, to Camden, you know, they have a couple of, a couple of jazz with the girls. His voice is so high. Derek, thank you, Melly C. Yeah, Derek was weird. Uh, he's got a bit of a high voice. I mean, James Bond's got to see Bond. James Bond. He's got to be so uber hyper masculine that guys want to be him and girls want to do him and girls want to be him and guys want to do him. It's got to be all that. He's got to be so universally. And you know, fuck this, people. Fuck the, the toxic masculinity shit. Uh, James Bond is supposed to be masculine. He didn't be like that. You know, if they were going to make it a woman, I wouldn't care because I didn't mind Leticia, whatever her name was. She was cool. I liked her. You make James Bond. James Bond's a fictional character. It could be anything. But if you're going to be a man, be a man. He's a bit, oh, I don't really like him. You know, everybody's, everybody's going on about his wife is really old and a bit of a slag, right? She really isn't very attractive. Uh, who that's, you know, who people love is nobody's business. Uh, you know, I remember Maxwell Caulfield, that handsome bastard from way back. He married Juliet Mills. She was like 50 years older than him. He loves her. Who cares? Who cares? He loves her. It doesn't matter. He loves her. I don't care. She's a thousand years old. It's nobody's business. But, and that's what the papers are talking about. His old wife. I'm like, that's nonsense. And she's Sam Taylor Wood, right? She's kind of Hollywood royalty. She comes from a lineage of filmmakers and stuff. Nobody's business. However, he is a crap looking Bond. Uh, he's too fey. Uh, you know, he's just smug. James Bond shouldn't be smug. He's James Bond. He doesn't need to be smug. Smug is when you're an arsehole. You know, it doesn't need to be that at all. Uh, listen, I wasn't a Tom Hardy for Bond guy, but I'm certainly one now. I certainly would take Tom Hardy over that because you know what? He's a ride. Absolutely. Uh, I, you know, I don't know. I don't know. It's just so fucking weird. Who are your choices for Bond? I think it should be uh, Superman. What's his face? Um, I never remember his name. He's Bond. That guy looks like James Bond. Yeah. Uh, why not Shania? Four ninety nine from the Dean Stir, which gets you the gun. Thank you for that. Uh, yeah, Tobes just says Idris is too old. Everybody's got a man crush on Idris Elba, right? He's cooler than fuck. Uh, I saw that Luther movie, and boy, that movie sucked. Show was great. Movie was crap. Uh, he's too old. They have to hire guys around 33 to 35 because he's got to do five movies. Contract for Bond is now five film deal. Used to be a three film deal. Well, it used to be whatever with Sean Connery. They didn't know. But it's got it. I think it's a five uh, film contract. Uh, I don't like this guy at all. Um, he's shitty. Henry Cavill. That's my guy. Henry Cavill. He's perfect. He's British. He's tall. He's handsome. He's a he, he's a he's a super computer nerd. Uh, he he can do Shakespeare. He's a really great actor, and he's fucking Superman. 
and they fired him. Why, why would that be? Finney Jones. Anybody watching The Gentleman, the new series, The Gentleman? I started that before, uh, you know, before the shitty, you know, before AL, uh, before after Laverne. I was watching that and I, I rather liked it. And that guy, Theo James, he's a smug arse, but uh, he might, he'd be better than this guy. This guy's too fey, too, too fey. There's something just, you know, if I, if you, you know, you got to his house early on an appointment, you might, mightn't be surprised that he's wearing a lady's under frock. You know, I wouldn't doubt it because he looks a, a bit smooth and pershy. That's not what I want my bond to be like at all. I think, I think, I think Henry Cavill's the right guy. Vinnie Jones is great, but he's, you know, he's, he's a, he's an old out of shape, uh, rugger, you know, I mean, Delalio, all those guys from that era, uh, amazing. Uh, but no, I don't think so. Topes just says that Bond should be single and banging models in real life, not married to a lady. 37. Well, we're supposed to be able to separate, um, you know, people's personal lives from it is acting, right? Now, when I'm in the play or film, I'm portraying a wizard. I'm not really a wizard. Do you understand that? So when you see me, I'll be a wizard for the duration of the film or the play. So Ian, so Ian, so Ian. That is from uh from extras, which is one of the fucking greatest episodes ever. Amazing. Easy with the five dollar super sticker. Let's bang that out with the gong. Because you're worth it. Yeah. So who do you guys want? I want uh, Jane. I want uh, Henry Cavill. Uh, oh, Daniel Day Lewis would have been a great Bond. He's you know too old now. They would have had to pack some muscle on him because you know he's generally a very slender guy. But here's a, 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 a the a guy who is at on another level completely of acting prowess. So. And I'm not even the biggest Daniel Day-Lewis fan, but even an idiot would know that this guy has acting superpowers that are way beyond mortal actors. Um, had he gotten the job when Daniel Craig was up for it, he probably would have been a superb, and he probably would have won an Academy Award as James Bond because he's that good. He brings a certain kind of gravitas to uh, to films that is just unparalleled, you know? Uh, Shane McGee says, I thought it got crap by episode three. Well, I got to episode two, so I might be there, Shane McGee, who apparently you're in line to be James Bond. And he was supposed to sign on Wednesday. Today is Thursday, and he didn't do it. And then Barbara Broccoli and Michael G. Wilson, the producers of Eon, the owners of James Bond, said, uh, it's a rumor. It's not true. So people, they probably got some feedback. They probably put his name out there. And people went, no, 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 no. He wears ladies under frocks. I went to his house early. We're meeting up for, we're meeting up for Jaws at, at full, half full. And, and I got there, and he said, this lemon, lemon, puree undergarment on it was all frilly he was wearing a frilly frock can't be him can't be him get henry cavill henry cavill for bond james bond needs a restart just like batman well, they did that i mean do we have to do that all the time casino royale was the ultimate restart the ultimate restart and i'm not a fan of those movies sorry i know it's christopher Nolan. i just i don't know I'll forever be a Michael Keaton Batman guy. Batman Begins. Batman, no, Batman. Yeah, it was not Batman Begins. It was Batman. Uh, what was the second one called? Shit, Batman Returns. But Danny DeVito, oof, man, was that a dark one. Jesus. The first one was a little stupid with Bat Dance and all that shit. You know, I love you, Prince, but that music was crap. Uh you know, Tim Burton, hit or miss, as we all know. You know, Easy is talking about that torture scene in Casino Royale. I mean, first of all, he goes, Le Chiffre goes, your body, you keep it in such good condition. What a pity. <laughs> and then he, you know, he cuts a hole in the rattan chair so his, his testicles fall behind, under the chair. And then he takes the big knotted rope with a fisherman's on goes woof, woof. every guy jumped back in the chair uh ray ray says vinnie jones no no well that was he was joking vinnie jones is very he's you know he's perfect for 
you know, to be in the gentleman and to be in anything that uh, Madonna's ex-husband does. <clears throat> I have a little itch too. Uh, it's time for some pictures because we're already at six o'clock. Prince, the future, electric chair were class, bat tunes. I have to go re revisit that album to see if it was as crap as I think it might have been. But I remembered liking it. I mean, Vicky Vale, uh, she was beautiful, right? She was. Okay, so let's see where we started today. I gotta look, I'm gonna boot up the pictures, make sure I got everybody in, in the boat. Melly C. Okay, yeah, we're gonna start with um, we're gonna start with Steve McDonald tonight. Did some Seamaster action? No, yeah, Seamaster action. It's heavy, looky. Look at that, the Seamaster three hundred coaxial master chronometer on the on the rubber. It's a beautiful watch. It's a man's piece, looking great on your little forest there. Couldn't be a sexier fit, fit and finish. Oh, and the puppy. What a beautiful thing. Give your puppy a big kiss for me because I'm uh, saving them all now. Saving them all. Melly C. Oh, this is great. Oh, this is great. Look at that. I, you know what? I like Snoopy in any iteration he comes in. On the Timex, on the motorcycle, looking amazing. And there's Paul Stanley from Kiss. And he's he says, you know what I do when I'm not on stage with Kiss? I like to rock my tutor. This is a chronometer. It's officially certified. It's made in Switzerland. I don't know this model. If I did, I'd expound upon it. But Gene Simmons gave it to me. He said, this one really rocks. So let's do it, people. Oh, look at this pair of beasts. What a pair. What a pair. I had a, a black and white cat named Glaucus, named after the invisible best friend of Ruth Gordon in the movie Harold and Maud. And uh, he looked just like that. And he was a beauty, too. Look at these be two beautiful cat kitty cats. Thank you so much for that, darling. Thank you so much. I love to share the pictures with the gang. And that was you. And we've got everybody's favorite, a hairy Sicilian, the Ginzaloon Supreme. It is Mr. Tony Scuderi sharing his tutor. Simple, classic, beautiful. Looks great. Beautifully posed on wood. And there it is on the wrist. Would you trim your arm? You're not, you don't look like the beast you used to be. What happened? Come back, beast. Very nice. Very nice. Everybody's hairy Sicilian. Everybody's favorite. It's the man, Mr. Scuderi. Are you in the chats? Where are you? Do you watch the show after? I know you're on here. And uh, the incomparable Mr. Jim Lassick. With his big, gigantic, muscular arm. And what a tattoo on this guy. Holy mackerel. Look at the size of that forearm. Holy shit. Is that your forearm or are you just happy to see me? That's the brand new Seamaster. It was released last year on rubber, looking incredible. That's on rubber, Jim? Is that what it says? Wow. This guy's got a monster set of paws on him, by the way. Ginormous. Big hands are impressive. Especially because now that all the guys check out other guys' wrists now, because that's pretty gay, right? One day you get punched out because they think you're looking further south. But when you see a guy with a nice set of paws and a nice wrist... It, it just works sometimes. And that's why it's important to choose the right wristwatch. That's also important. Angelo, me, Nichello. Ooh, look at this little plethora of Omega, Omega, Omega. Let's share that with the world. Oh, boy. Look at this. Now, this is very similar to the one Paul has. Probably in the same ballpark, 50s bumper movement, I'm assuming. This is an Omega Seamaster uh, automatic. These are beautiful watches. See the crown on that? I don't have that on Pulse because when we got Pulse, it was the only thing that wasn't original was the crown. And I have to, I'm going to bring that to Omega and I'm going to get it done there. That's that's going to be his birthday present this year. Then he's got the beautiful constellation in green and gold. 
Look at this. I don't know this bracelet. Honestly, it's very Jubilee-esque, but it's kind of striated all the way down in a kind of tonal shape. Very interesting. Uh, well, actually, it's more like a Mark II case. Constellations, one of the most under uh, under appreciated versions. And here is a Mark II, and I love this. You guys, you know that these watches always came with whatever the movement was at the time. And of course, this is the 861. And uh, these are beautiful watches. And the other thing that's really interesting about these watches, guys, is they have they're waterproof. You could take those diving, well, probably not deep sea diving. And then over here in the far right, we have the Railmaster Chrono. This is the XXL. This is a gigantic watch, forty-five millimeters. Forty-five, yeah, forty-five. Uh, can you do us a big favor, man? Can you send us a picture of the? of the railmaster on when i said ranchero it's the railmaster on your on your wrist i want to see how this wears on you try to send it before the end of the show you just sent me this one right that's angela angela send me a picture of that <laughs> shane mcgurk says bonkers looking handsome couldn't be more handsome give him all the kisses there there are in the world absolutely beautiful what a baby doll what a beautiful, beautiful baby. Thank you for that. You got a picture of that on your wrist? If not, we'll have it for tomorrow, Angelo. Anyway, that's all the pictures today. Everybody was a little light on pictures. Eon, a hand says, Eon, everything or nothing. Yeah, it's kind of like the inside word on the, you know, listen, these guys have to, Bond films are very expensive. Even the last several Bond, all, all of the Daniel Craig, uh, uh, films have been 49 million. Is it 49 millimeters? The XXL is it 49? I should have known that. Should have known better than to let you go alone. Times like these I can't make it on my own. Uh, I should know better. Um, these all of the Daniel Craig era films have made the most money for Bond, even with inflation. Uh, Casino Royale did like six, uh, six and a half hundred million then quantum of solace did the same amount less plus or minus 20 million then of course skyfall did well over a billion dollars then uh specter did about the same a little less maybe i think it was 1.2 for skyfall i think it was 900 or a billion for for specter and then the last one kind of pandemic -y, i think it did about six seven hundred million uh, and it was, they're very expensive films. They cost 200 million plus. I don't know what, what, why anything costs that much kind of money, but it does. I mean, listen, people's albums used to cost $250,000 minimum in the seventies and eighties albums cost $250,000. You know what that money is? It's all wasted, wasted, wasted money. It's the guy who it's Joe goes to get you the coffee. Then Pete goes to your dealer and gets you your blow for the weekend. And then the hookers. I mean, where is this money going? so ridiculous i understand the promotional stuff is expensive but the making of films seems like a lot of wasted money uh 300 million dollars i mean i know it takes a lot of people and a lot of salaries to make cgi movies but if you just watched a sheen's ireland movie that you know what his expenses were his expenses were his time and his flights and hotels and food but all of that work that entire Dublin film and all the other films that he's done. And I'm not blown smoke up my friend's ass. I watched it twice. It's astonishing that one person can do that amount of work. Yeah, it took him months and months and months, but that's one person doing all that work, you know? So he did all that editing, all of the soundtracking, all of the filming, all of the drone stuff, all of that stuff, one guy. Now, if you watch that on, on BBC or PBS in America, you would think that that thing cost, you know, a million bucks to make you definitely would records are now made for five less a couple of grand in the house the cost of your computer and that's it you know you, you don't need anything else everything's their samples or whatever maybe you buy a couple of drum loops you know and all that shit yeah dean says <laughs> You know about that. So I don't know what people know and what they don't on the three drones that he lost. Well, listen, to be fair, uh, Oshin doesn't drive. <laughs> and he certainly doesn't drive a, a drone. So, I mean, he was, you know, that was of his first drone experiences. Now he's a pro. I mean, did you see the drone shots in that? 
they looked like Spielberg. They looked seriously looked like it was so smooth and so perfect. I was watching that, watching the panning on that going, okay, got to see how he did this. And I couldn't, I couldn't tell, couldn't see how it was edited, seamless editing, really great. So we're talking about Bond films. So I mean, listen, they're worried about everything. So they have to super make sure that you know, this franchise is not going to die. And I think that that guy's going to kill their franchise. If that guy's a very high talker. He's very high talker with his little fringe on. He's got his pom-poms because he likes to have a bit of lady dress up at night. Easy says, please upvote everyone. Could we upvote? Upvote, upvote, upvote. It would be great. Great, 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 great. I would appreciate it. I'll just grab these last couple of last couple of chats and then we'll say goodnight. Easy also says Adrian Barker shows his explore too on a gray NATO. Looks so good. Well, he sells those NATOs, doesn't he? Doesn't he? Doesn't he? Doesn't he? He's got to spruik in his own brand. Uh, uh, Dean says, Shane McGee, I should send Dirk a photo of your bank account. Why? Because he signed on to be. Uh, the new bond. Steve McDonald says Rangers, the best tutor. It's a nice one. Please upvote. Nice Omega collection. That's fantastic. The Carre said it was uh, 49 millimeters. I always thought it was like 45 or 46. Uh, Al Benedetti says that Ireland video was cinematic. It, it looks like something you would actually pay a lot of money for and go to a theater and sit down and watch and be riveted and be riveted. Right. How that man does it is unreal. And listen, he's my buddy. I know I, you know, I talked to him during the process of him making that stuff and he's exhausted, you know, and I, you know, like I can see when he's working because he puts his little silences on his text messages. So, so I know not to bother him. And it's like four o'clock in the morning, five o'clock in the morning, his time he's editing. So he's been, he has been nonstop doing that, you know, uh, Buy him a drink. He deserves it. Uh, drones are not 40 meters water resistance like a watch. I don't think that they are at all. And they're certainly not tree resistant either. <laughs> uh, last few films had awful storylines. Um, my, my least favorite uh, James Bond film, and I've gone on history saying this, is uh, Skyfall. Because they turned him into Bruce Wayne. Uh, there are so many Batman references, Alfred, uh, poor little rich boy, his parents were murdered, uh, blah, 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 blah. Then he's got, you know, he's got the Wayne, Man Wayne Manor. And then, then there's the home alone thing where the helicopter and they booby trapped the house and Skyfall made me furious. And then they killed Judy Dench. Why? And like, remember they said she's going blind. She can't do it anymore. That was the news. She's made like 10 films. She was so good as M. She was, when they got rid of her, and I love Ray Fiennes. Love him, love him, love him. He's so shitty as M. He's just stodgy and eh, it's crap. You'd think, you know, after they got a female M and a black money penny and they're, you know, pushing, pushing it forward, that they wouldn't get some, you know, old British guy with bad teeth. And that's what he looks like. And I love Ray Fiennes. I think he's brilliant. I think he should have got the Academy Award for Schindler's List. And he goes, I absolve you. I forgive you. What was the, what was the word he said in Schindler's List to, to the, to what's her name? Uh, oh my God. I forgive you. I absolve you. Oh, he was devastatingly horrible in that. Oh my God. And Angelo came through at the end of the day. And here it comes, kids. Here it is, that big bad boy on the Minichiello wrist. Look at that. Boom, that's a big doggy. Big doggy. It looks good, though. Looks good. You're like me. I need a tan, too. The Round Master. I would love that watch. I couldn't put it. I have a 7 and uh, 7.25 inch wrist. My Milgauss looks good. 42 is about as far as I'll ever go on a watch. 49. Can't do it. But thank you for sending that. And I think we're going to kill the show for today. Um. So, yeah, Sky Falls crap. Thank you for that. Oh, wait. There's a Ray Ray picture. I don't want to forget anything from Ray Ray. Because he had just as bad a week as I did. Just about. Ray Ray. It looks like you're... Uh, oh, look. What is that? Is that... What is that thing? Is that a real life insect? What the f is that? Jesus Christ, Ray Ray. 
Oh my God, I'm scared. It's beautiful, whatever it is. Hey, I pardon you. My sister said it. I pardon you. I pardon you. I pardon you. She was the Jewish girl that was like cleaning his house and making his meals. And he says to her, he goes, well, I find myself attracted to you. And I, I know that you're not exactly human. I mean, what the fuck was going on with those people in that? And those Nazis were fucking out of their mind. Ray finds just, first of all, just to, uh, just to say that in a movie. I mean, could you imagine? Oh, this is what you're going to say. And you have to, you know, it's crazy. Anyway, he should have won the Academy Award, Ray Fiennes. But I don't like him as M. I just think he looks like a you know, old British guy with bad teeth. The old stereotype, because no British people have bad teeth anymore. They have great dentistry going on over there. That's a moth. That's a big fucking, that's mothra. That's insane. Anyway, guys, that's me for tonight. Uh, thank you so much for joining me this week. <sighs> Thank you for everything. Uh, uh, doing the show has been extremely um, rewarding for me. It has helped me uh, keep busy. It's had given me something to look forward to. Uh, I don't know what to do around my house without the girl. Um, it's not an easy thing. I have moments where I just don't, I just don't know what I'm doing, and uh, the show really helps me get around and and get there and 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 feel feel like I'm a part of something special and, and you guys definitely make me feel that way. So, uh, yeah, there's that. And so, uh, I'll be back on Tuesday, probably watch fashion police on Monday. I would assume it since we took off this week tomorrow, I'll be doing the show with the big guy. It's going to be classic bashers. I think we're going to be talking about Kate Middleton and we're going to be saying, where is she Kate Middleton? Let's find out where she is. We have no idea at all. Um, yeah. So remember to hold the door open. Remember to say please and thank you. Remember to hug the one and kiss the one you love every single day. And don't forget how much it means to them. And uh, try very hard uh, not to be a dick. Unless, of course, they're a total clown. <laughs>